From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Yeah, Pete Corbin, Dollar. I found your message when I got in, but I don't know why I'm returning your call after that lacing I took from you. Well, at least you haven't run out on us. Why should I? How would you like to explain what you were doing in Port Morris, New Jersey yesterday afternoon at the scene of the so-called accidental death of your client, Ricardo Amarigo? Oh, yeah, I, th- I, th- I thought that was you I saw in that car down there. It sure was. Are you in your office? Yeah, that's right. I thought you wanted well, to stay know... there. I do want to know. That and a lot of other things. I'll see you in about an hour after I've made another call. Okay, okay, I'll be here. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. Location, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. To the Philadelphia Mutual Liability and Casualty Company. Following is an accounting of further expenses during my investigation of the Ricardo Amerigo matter. Expense account item six, $33.75. Dry cleaning and new shirts, socks, and so on, including one pair of shoes to replace the ones I lost in the South Jersey swamp while rescuing what I thought was a priceless Amati violin in a muddy tidewater inlet called Lucky Hole Creek. But when I showed it to Harry Branson at Philadelphia Mutual... Well, at least he promised to have an expert look it over and pass final judgment. That's the reason for item 7, 85 cents. Taxi to Harry's office in the security first building. Oh, come in, John, come in. Hi, Harry. Well, what have you found out? Nothing yet, but I should hear from the violin man any minute. John, I do hope I was wrong. Sit down. Thanks. Harry, I could have committed mayhem when you told me that fiddle I picked up in the swamp isn't the Amati. To think you nearly drowned retrieving it. Oh, brother, that's putting it mildly. But I'm sure Foresto will know. Foresto? Uh, Foresto Sir Negliario, uh, however he pronounces it, the violin man. He really an expert? Well, he's the one who okayed the $30,000 policy on Amerigo's violin. Well, let's just hope this one's it. Did you learn anything in Port Morris? Only confirm what you'd already learned from Sergeant Peters down there. That someone had sawed through some steering connection on Amerigo's car before it crashed through the bridge? Yeah. Still no sign of the body? Nope. Oh, uh, a man named Adam Bowles called. Oh, he's an old friend. Used to be a private detective and just can't get it out of his system. Oh. Well, he called me, you know. I know. And I must confess, John, that I'm inclined to agree with him. That Peter Corbin, Amerigo's agent, did it? Agent and beneficiary, John. And apparently the one person who knew Amerigo well enough... I said it to Ad Bowles until I was blue in the face, Harry, and I say it again. Too easy. But who else? I don't know. That's what I came back here to find out. All the evidence... Circumstantial evidence. The kind of man that'd be a fool to let pile up against him if he really was guilty. Mm. Even so... Harry, let me do it my own way, huh? What if this Corbin tries to skip out? Then will be the time to... He's kidding. Yes? Uh, Mr. Sherney Arrow to see you, sir. Sherney Arrow. I, I-, I knew that was it. Uh, send him in. Our man is here, John. Foresto? Yes, uh, Sherney... Sure, sure. Oh, well. Uh, come in, uh, <clears throat> for, for rest all. Meet Mr. Dollar. Yes, uh, how do you do, Mr. Dollar? You brought the fiddle? Yeah, uh, right here on the desk. Well? Uh, thank you. I'll open up the case. Well, is it? Mr. Branson, Mr. Dollar, I'm sure. Well? Well, Mr. Scherniero? Scherniero. Look, you've only got to look now that I've cleaned away some of the mud and the salt from the swamp where it was found. We're lucky it did not do any real damage to change the appearance. But nobody could tell the way you gave it to me. Well, how about now that you've cleaned it up? Yes. Ah, you see here. The shape of the F holes, the curve to the belly. Yeah. The beautiful shape, the signs of age, and above all, here, you see, the label. Label? Through the F hole, you can see it. There. Nicola Amati. Then it is Amarillo's. Si. You're sure, Mr. Chaniero? Hmm. The label says. And Foresto says. 
Well, look, I talked with a fiddle player in the orchestra at my hotel last night. He told me there are literally thousands of imitations of every important violin ever made. Shape, size, label, and all. Now, listen, Foresto. Yeah. Tell me the truth. Do you really consider yourself an expert? Well, I'm a... Uh... I'm a seller of violins in my store. Violins, harmonicas, alcorinas, victrolas. How good are the violins you sell? Oh, so good ones. Some as high as $65. Harry, do you mean to tell me, with all due apologies for us, do you mean to tell me he was your authority for a $30,000 policy on Ricky Amarigo's violin? Well, of course, a representative from the Wurlitzer Collection in Chicago verified Foresto's opinion at the time. Gee, the Wurlitzer know every good violin in the world. Yeah, uh, Harry, let me have it. I'll give you a receipt for it. I'll bring it back when I'm through with it. Whatever you say, John. I assume you want to check further on the authenticity. And you are right. John. Yeah. To put it bluntly, you've still not accomplished very much insofar as Amerigo himself is concerned. With this fiddle under my arm, I think maybe I will. See you later. <laughs> Maybe Harry had been right in the very beginning. Maybe I should have known a little more about music, or more specifically, violins. Or maybe I should have left this aspect of the case to someone else and concentrated on the disappearance death of Ricardo Amerigo. Maybe I... Uh, well... Expense account item 8, 80 cents. Taxi to booking agent Peter Corbin's office. All right, Dollar, let's not waste either your time or either mine. You want to know what I was doing... That's right, Corbin. The Amati. I found it right where you planted it, in that swamp near Port Morris. You actually found it, thank the... What do you mean, where I planted it? What else were you doing down there in the South Jersey swamps? Is that where you found it? Well, you ought to know. But frankly, Corbin, I think you overplayed it a bit when you tucked part of one of Amerigo's monogram shirts there with it. I don't know what you're talking about. Actually, I mean it. Then what were you doing down there? And, brother, you better make it good. The same thing you were trying to find out what happened to Ricky Amerigo. I tell you, Dalla, I was his best friend. It's a true fact. If his fiddle was down there, too, I didn't see it. I wish I could believe you. But the way it looks from here, you were willing to have the Amati violin found lying out there in that salt marsh because you couldn't get rid of it without exposing yourself. It didn't put any money in your pocket the way you figure Amerigo's death will. The way it looks from here, Dalla, that's where you're wrong. Yeah? Yeah, actually wrong. If Amerigo's dead, I collect in his insurance as his beneficiary. That's what the policy says, but believe all right, me. All right, But you think I wouldn't collect on the Amati fiddle, whether it was found or if it wasn't found. That's where you're wrong. What are you talking about? Because I'm also a beneficiary to his will. How do you know? <laughs> because I'm not only the sole and only heir in his will, I'm also the executive of... Uh, yeah, executive of his estate, too. Oh. Yeah. So if I was the heavy... What would I take a chance leaving a $30,000 fiddle laying around in some swamp? Hmm? Cover up? $30,000 worth? All right, what did you do with a hacksaw? You mean somebody sawed up the fiddle? Oh, no, let me see. No, 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 easy, would you? Somebody sawed partway through a steering arm on Amerigo's car to make it crash. Murder? Oh, that's a pretty fair question. Oh, no, oh, no, darling, no. Oh, no, who would murder a nice, sweet guy like Ricky? Maybe he was a drunk, maybe he hit the skids, but he had no enemies. He couldn't have. Okay. Please. Maybe he was just a drunken bum, worthless. He threw away a concert career, but he was still... A, he was a gentleman, an actual gentleman. And he was a sweet guy. Nobody could have murdered him. Oh, no, no, darling, not Rick. Pete, Pete, would you... Who was it? Tell me, huh? Who was the lousy punk? I'll kill him. Okay, Pete, I believe you. I don't care whether you believe me or not. Will you tell me who done it? Pete. Rick. Pete, will you listen to me? I'm listening. Now, look here. Look here and tell me. Is this Ricky's Amati violin? Yeah, that's... That's it. Ah, oh, poor Ricky. Poor drunk... You're sure? Lover. I'm sure. All right, Pete, I'm going to give it to you straight. All I ask is you now tell listen to me, me will you? We don't know who killed Ricky Amerigo. We haven't even found his body. The Port Morris police are still trying, of course, but it... It could have been carried by the tide through that in inlet, the Lucky Hole Creek, right on out to the sea. Or, of course, it may appear somewhere along the creek. It'll take weeks to search that swamp thoroughly. No, Anyhow... If they do find him, I want to see he gets a decent burial. Will you promise me? Okay, I'll try, but listen, will you? Because of the sawed-through steering arm, his death was made to look accidental. Double indemnity. And you're the beneficiary. 
He not only wasn't making you any money because his drinking kept him off the concert stage, but he owed you money, plenty. Now, that's a motive. As for opportunity, who else had as much as you? Nobody, nobody, nobody. But I love the poor guy. I try to keep him alive and get him back in his own... You told me, and I believe you. But the fact remains that the insurance company, the police, even a pretty smart private detective I know, all figure you for number one suspect. And they hope to accumulate enough evidence to move in on you. And you're with them, huh? No, no. What? Yesterday right here you told me... Sure, I know I did. But I've had time to think it out. Now, pinning it on you is just too easy. Much too easy. I'll say it to your face, Pete. You're no metal giant. But only another fool would let circumstantial evidence like that pile up against him and then commit a murder like that. I may be wrong. Lord help you if I am and find out. But I think you're clean. I swear I am. I'm going to play it that way unless I find solid reason to change my mind. Because, Pete. Yeah, Johnny. You're the one person who can help me in this case. I'll, I'll do anything. I, actually, anything. Just ask me. All right. Now, first, tell me where you were last Friday evening when Amerigo's car made that dive off that bridge. Alibi? That's right, brother, and you can be sure I'll check it. At Willie's. All right, who's Willie? Willie? Willie Elliott. So he's a saxophone player. one of my clients. He was a friend of Ricky's, too. Well, where can I find him? What's his address? Uh, I'll write it down for you. We had a four-handed poker game. Who else in the game? Uh, well, Jerry Goldsmith, 120... He know Ricardo, so. too? Oh, yeah. Composer, conductor, violin player. Fiddle player, huh? Who yeah. was the fourth? Uh, Eric Snowden. Who's he? He's a fiddle maker. He lives at his shop. I'll uh, write that Fiddle down. maker, did you say? Yeah. 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 Yeah, he was the sole and only man Ricky would ever let touch his Amati for repairs and fixing up, you understand? Who else were good friends of Ricardo's? Ah, uh, <laughs> while he was making it, plenty... Lately, nobody. You sure? Oh, nobody. Johnny, I know. Of course, he hung around a lot of bars. He was a regular. Give me a list. Well, let's see. There's a little place over on Pine Street called the Yellow Lamp. Expense account item nine, 370. A quick sandwich for Pete Corbin and myself and a flock of phone calls to Pete's poker pals. Just to make sure they were in and available when I could get around to see them. I had to phony up an excuse for seeing each of them. A friend of Pete's, just in from out of town, suggested I give you a call, that sort of thing. And apparently it didn't arouse any suspicion. At least it was a start. And for the first time, call it a hunch or whatever you like, I felt I was going to get somewhere in this case. As it turns out, I was. Believe me. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a trio of musicians. The question, which one's story was playing a little flat? Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Sam Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.